In the first video of this series, we introduced the topic of the origin of life and raised some questions that many people have assumed were answered. We promised that we'd address these questions in our follow-up videos, and here we are. Video 1 addressed the definition of life in the broader sense, which scientists haven't been able to agree on, and some even decided the definition is unimportant. This video takes a closer look at Charles Darwin's theories. So, did Darwin explain how life came into existence? Darwin's theory of evolution aims to explain how different species of organisms arose and developed from a common ancestor through natural selection and random mutations. These mutations occurred during reproduction of new offspring. Therefore, the theory of evolution covers how life developed into multiple forms and species, not how life originated in the first place. Even with the assumption that all creatures are descendants from a single common ancestor, that very first living organism couldn't be developed through biological evolution because biological evolution requires biological reproduction. Interestingly, Darwin himself avoided discussing how life first came into existence. Firstly, in 1861, in the third edition of his book The Origin of Species, he stated that it is not a valid objection that science, as yet, throws no light on the far higher problem of the essence or origin of life. Secondly, on March 29, 1863, he sent a letter to his close friend Joseph Dalton Hooker, saying, It is mere rubbish thinking, at present, of origin of life, one might as well think of origin of matter. So, if evolution's mechanisms like random mutation and natural selection are not applicable when it comes to the origin of life, what should be? Abiogenesis Abiogenesis is defined as the origin of life from non-living matter. To construct any convincing theory about abiogenesis, we must take into account the conditions on Earth about 4 billion years ago. Abiogenesis takes place before biology, meaning before biological evolution can begin, hence it is called prebiotic or prebiology. The attempts to explain abiogenesis rely purely on chemistry and physics. However, in reality, molecules and chemistry don't care about life. Molecules have not been observed to be evolving towards life in even the simplest of forms. The main assumption by scientists in explaining abiogenesis is the possibility of matter to self-assemble and self-replicate, given a long time horizon. This assumption tries to eliminate any source for the non-materialistic information within life and biology. However, even after so many years of using the latest advanced technology in trying to explain abiogenesis, using only chemistry and physics has not been successful. Attempts to create a living cell using perfect lab conditions have failed so far. Needless to say, it has never been observed in nature that a living thing can evolve from non-living matter. Let's wrap it up. Firstly, Darwin's theory of evolution and biological evolution in general has nothing to do with explaining the initial origin of life. Secondly, the origin of life is prebiotic, before biology, so it's pure chemistry for the material aspect. Thirdly, the chemistry of life is very hard to figure out. And fourthly, for non-materialistic aspects like information coding within the living organisms, there's almost nothing to explain how information can evolve on its own from chemistry. Nope, Darwin couldn't explain it then, and neither can neo-Darwinists do so today. Thank you for watching, if you've enjoyed our video, don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons below.